Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For this video I'm going to be drawing this acorn and the reason I chose this subject is because there's a lovely contrast between the two surfaces in this acorn. The more textured cap part of the acorn and the shinier uh, brown colored bottom part and I've given the link to this image uh, in the description for this video so if you want you can follow along with me. Uh, so let's get to it. Now looking at this picture I can see that the acorn has a yellow undertone uh, on the bottom part of the main body of the acorn. So what I'm going to do is, is begin uh, laying down a bottom layer uh, on, the, on this area using a dark Naples yellow. Now the reason I picked this color is because it leans towards the ochre but I don't really want to use the ochre I use. I want to use a color which has more yellow tones to it so this one seemed good and I've colored the entire uh, um, acorn and I've left out the brightest white highlights and I'm now going to bring in this sanguine color which is a lovely uh, brown with, with a lot of uh, reddish tone to it and I'm just going to roughly add the color at the edges of this acorn where I see all the brown tones and the red tones going in and here as you can see I'm not really worrying about um, whether the color is uniform or not or um, or I'm getting an even tone or enough color or not because I'm going to be using um, solvent and all of these colors are going to blend into each other and uh, so so yeah so for the beginning layers I am just going to focus on getting the right colors in and not really worry about getting them down with the correct technique so here I'm using uh, burnt sienna and before this I used the dark sepia and and now as you can see in the image there's a lot of orange uh, tone to the um, to the acorn so I'm adding that wherever I can see it now when you're adding the color in this part of the acorn you want to keep in mind uh, the curvature and shape of the acorn so all of the color that you add needs to be not in straight lines but to have a little bit of curvature uh, and if you observe the acorns uh, carefully you'll see uh, and realize what I mean and uh, so here I'm now going to darken some of the colors because uh, because there needs to be enough pigment on the paper for the solvent to really uh, blend and push the pigment into the texture of the paper so so I'm just adding a little more of the pigment wherever I see, uh, color wherever I see it so I've added a little bit of yellow now I'm using a Derwent light fast uh, natural brown color and I'm adding it at the sides of the acorn where the shadows are falling so once I'm done adding all of the different uh, layers and colors of brown that I see and just really deepening the pigment uh, everywhere, uh, I'm going to use an old synthetic brush, dip it in solvent and dab off the extra on a tissue and use it in a scrubbing motion to sort of blend uh, all of the colors uh, that I've already laid down and to push the pigment into the paper to make it smooth and so that I can add more color on top of this. Now before beginning the next layer of uh, color, you want to make sure that the, uh, that the solvent that you've put down on the paper is dry, that your paper is dry and then you can again go in and darken any other layers, any of the colors that you want and add the other details. So here I'm using, um, I'm using a green gold color and I'm adding some of the, uh, I'm, I'm starting to add the other details that I can see. So there are little bumps uh, on this acorn's body and that shows up uh, in, in sort of, uh, in a gradation of color. And you have to note that uh, to really be able to uh, render this uh, acorn realistically. So if you notice, I'm actually using all of the same colors that I've used previously, and I'm just using those colors to deepen the uh, to deepen the color uh, on this acorn. I'm going to pull up any highlights that I have lost uh, with an eraser, and just adding any of the other details that I might not have added in the first layer. I'm going to do that now. At this stage, I'm also going to start deepening the shadows because if you've seen my previous video where I've drawn a shiny uh, sunbird, you'll uh, you'll realize that a shiny uh, surface can be rendered accurately by really adjusting the uh, contrast between the highlights and the shadows. So I'm going to really deepen the shadows in this uh, in this layer of color that I'm putting down and and. 
This stage also requires me to constantly keep looking at my reference picture to see and to notice every small detail and put it down on paper. Using a dark sepia, which is actually one of the darkest colors I have, uh, apart from black, I'm going to use this color to really deepen the shadows at the edges of this acorn. So this gives an impression uh, that the acorn, acorn's form is rounded and that the edges of the subject are curving away from you. So now I'm again going to use uh, the solvent and I'm going to again blend all of these layers. Now at this point you want to be careful because you've already put down a lot of pigment on the paper, uh, you've already put down a lot of color and if you're not very um, very light with your touch of the brush there's a chance that the pigment will all, will all be pushed around and uh, so, so yeah so there's a little bit of a learning curve you want to be careful with this second uh, layer of the solvent that you're adding so now again i'm um, uh, coming back with my pencils and adding some of the little uh, lines and little details that i can see even in the highlights in the whitest highlights there are some light lines of colors that i can see um, so, so I'm just going to add that deepening the brown color wherever I see it. Now completing the bottom half of this uh, acorn, I'm just going to add that little uh, tiny tail thing and then just using a grey uh, finish of this bottom part. And now coming to the cap of this acorn, I'm going to use this very light uh, greenish yellow, this earth green and this may green to, to sort of uh, put down the base layer for this part. Now for the base layer, uh, for the cap of the acorn, I'm going to use a solvent to blend the layers because I want a uniform uh, base layer. But for the subsequent layers, I'm not going to be using any solvent because I want to retain that little textured look for this part of the acorn. So as opposed to the brown uh, body of the acorn, which was very shiny, so, so there the solvent worked because you get a uniform color. Uh, after once it's blended with the solvent but here there's a lot of texture I can see so I want to retain that and I'm not going to be using a solvent and once I've done this I'm going to use a brown pencil and just add the little markings that I can see uh, looking at the reference image uh, so that's it for our acorn if you like the video do subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up and uh, thank you for watching